Caleb, our first big um, celebrity was Caleb McLaughlin. Yes. Mm. Um, from, you know, the kid from Stranger Things. Uh, he wore it for the Emmys and the Globe, the Globe and Globe Awards. And who he was standing next to. Yeah, he was standing next to his castmates and he got best dress. And they was and, wearing. Yeah, they was wearing like Versace. Gucci, Versace. Gucci on. And then they was like, what are you wearing? He was like, Gossip Couture. Phone blew up. I'm like, yo, Gilly, we out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Facts. Hey, new, hey, new number. Who yeah. is this? Yeah. 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 So yeah, I think that's where it was like, yo, this, mm -hmm. we got something here. Then we got, then we got Joel Embiid, Rotimi, Amari Hardwick, Daniel Brooks. Like the, the list just kept growing. Mm -hmm. It just kept growing. And it got to a point where it was beautiful because all of our, all of our, our customers, all of our consumers look just like us. Mm. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, this is the power of the black dollar. Yeah. And this is proof of it. Man, listen, the way you dress oh. is the way you are addressed. Mm. Yo, what's good? What's poppin'? What it is, what it ain't, what it could be, what it should be, what it would be. Cam Newton, the son, Mr. Boogie, the all here for another episode of Funky Friday. And I'm here to drop good content for the masses, and I always promise to keep it funky for your asses. Now, today, you see me. I'm fresh, as always, but today a different type of fresh because I'm wearing... Garcon Couture. Now you may ask yourself, what the fuck is Garcon Couture? It is a minority owned luxury fashion brand made by these two individuals, Illy and Gilly. Fellas, what's going on with you? What's going on, Kim? What's going on, my brother? That's everything. Marvelous. Now, tell me what Garcon Couture is. Ooh. Man, that's a good question. I mean, Garcon Couture is a brotherhood. Mm -hmm. It's us, you know, we all got so couture. You know, it's a luxury custom suit line, you know, specialize in tuxedos, suits, menswear, and women as well too, you know? But again, it's Gasso is more to just what we do. It's, it's our lifestyle, you know, it's a lifestyle. That's what we do every day. We wake up, we breathe Gasso, we wear Gasso, you know? I mean, Gasso is, uh, is, is a storytelling from scratch where we met in college and we created something that we didn't see was common within our neighborhood, within the culture, within just fashion. Yeah. And we're like, yo, how can we create something that sets us apart and makes the, the consumer feel empowered? Yeah. How can they feel comfortable in wearing something and them feeling good about it? Yeah. So, um, Ilbert Sanchez. Yes, sir. Um, tell me about your story, bro. Like I. Uh, this episode, I want to really captivate mo uh, multiple things, but you guys are immigrants. Yeah. Legal immigrants, not yeah. illegal. Yeah. yeah. Legal. Yeah. And tell me about tell me about where you are, or how did you get to this point right now? How did how did this uh, connection happen? I think the connection between me and Gilly was um, humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. Facts. Realizing that our stories were synonymous when we started to speak to each other the day that we met in college, back in 05. Yeah. You know, SUNY Cobo still. And, you know, I was born in Honduras. Uh, I'm Garifuna, which are the Afro-Caribbean Arab Indians. We exiled from St. Vincent, ended up in the outskirts of Central America. So I was born in Honduras. And our stories with, with Gilly being born in Haiti, and like, yo, listening to his upbringings, I'm like, yo, we have the same type of upbringings when it comes to like culture, yes. respect, respect, the grind, the hard work, the authenticity, it was like, yo, like, like the foods, even the foods be similar, you know? Yeah. So it was like a, it was one of those things where it's like, yo, we got to create something from this. So the, it's deeper than just clothes for, for us. Mm -hmm. It is a lifestyle and it runs through our blood. Right. The Just being able to show off for our culture. Yeah. You, you too, Gil. Like, I just, um, I want to make sure I do a, a, a great job with not only speaking for what's appeasing to me, I always got to do a due diligence for the consumer. Like it does me good to be able to go get gas, go to the grocery store, just do everyday life. And somebody said, hey, bro, you know what I'm saying? I like your, I like your, your podcast. I don't really like calling it a podcast because it's like a candid conversation. I want to humanize each and every person that comes here. Uh, we recently met, what, two or three months ago. Yep. Yeah. And, 
you know, where we are right now, you guys telling me about where you guys came from. I was like, man, fuck it. You know, fuck business. You know, you guys have a empowering story. And that's what this platform is. I, I, I created Funky Friday to show a side of me outside of, you know, the football field where everybody knows me from. This humanizes me to be able to talk about things that I care about. Everybody knows I love fashion. Well, they see me wearing fashion, but really seeing a brand like Garcon Couture made from people who look like me, have the same cultural values. And that's, that's, that's very key, especially where I'm at in my life. I want people to see that I'm not afraid to be myself. You know what I mean? Yes. So, so tell me about your, your Haitian descent. And, and I mean, um, I was born in Haiti. Mm -hmm. you no, know, um, I'm a twin, fraternal twin. Mm -hmm. um, so moved to the state when I was about six years old after my mom passed away. Mm -hmm. My father, you know, told three boys, raising three boys by himself. You know, he was, he was the old school Haitian that, mm -hmm. you know, school first, everything else second. Right. There's nothing else, sports second. School, you gotta go to school, get an education and things like that. So, and, and raising with a, father that tough, you know, it's it's hard to go to him and tell your dad, I love you, or dad, I want to do this. Because, you know, fashion was never, you know, my thing. You know, it was, you got to go to school to be a doctor, lawyer, engineer. Mm -hmm. Anything else is a failure. Right. So now what I'm doing right now, like he actually, one time I actually brought him to the show in New York City. He sees it, you know, he understands it. He's like, I can see he's proud, but he would never say it. Yeah. You know, but that's how it is. I know it, that's how it is. But, you know, yeah. and yeah. seeing that in his face is like, yo. Yeah. He is like, I guess he's he's okay with what I'm doing now. You know, I'm taking care of myself. I'm taking care of my family. You know, right. so that's that's you know that's how the upbringing. You know, you know, being in a house with just boys, no woman around. It it was a tough. It was tough. You know, but it a was a lot of testosterone. A lot of testosterone. You know, and um, now having my own kid. You know, trying to move around, maneuver, yeah. and things like that. But. And yeah. how many kids do you have? Two boys. Two, Two boys. boys, man. But y'all ain't producing number boy. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. It's crazy. Like, yo, it's, my father have 11 kids. 11 boys, one girls. What? Yeah. 11 boys. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, hold up. Mm -hmm. 11 kids. Pop has got 11. 11. I inspired. That I know of, so 11. <laughs> but out of those 11, 10 boys? Yes. No, 11 boys, one girl. So, 12, 12 in total. 12 in total. Correct. Mm -hmm. Boy, I got to talk to Pop, boy. Because I want more kids. Yeah? No, like, for real. I do. Damn, seven, nine, nine, boy? No. I got seven kids now. Uh, and, like, for me, five, five biological children, two that this, they're respectfully mine. I feel like they're my surrogate children. You can't tell me that they're not mine. You can't tell them that I'm not theirs. You see what I'm saying? Um, and where I'm at, it's like empowering my children to be something that my, my, my parents did for me, but also what I was receptive to or what I kind of, uh, connected to as of my growth as a man, you know what I'm saying? Like to your dad's point, he never said, I love you, but you know, he loved you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I spoke briefly about it. As this, as we can prepare for this, like my dad never, I've never kissed my dad. You know what I'm saying? Same yet. And but my dad, I know, if I need somebody to go with me to the moon, he's with He'll you. Be there. He, he gonna be there. Yeah, he no, right. no, no questions, no comments, no concerns. Right. If I need that long, my dad gonna be there. Yeah. That's just the type of connection that we have. And I've learned to 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 understand. And my development as a as a as a as an adult is like, bro, you gotta allow people to be them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not for me to question like, Dad, why you ain't never say you love me or needed you? Like, no, nah, it's more or less like, man, that's my pop. And if you don't agree with something, that's cool. Like, and I think oftentimes people in this day and age, they want people to be what they want them to be. And that's not fair. You know what I'm saying? Question for you. You think that like change you or revolve you as a man when you was little, like, you know, dad don't say he love you, or dad, you know, you don't get that affection from your dad, you know, does that affect you? No. You know, no? No, it doesn't. No? What it did do for me as, everybody has their own journey. My journey and my growth took on its own identity. I went to three different colleges, University of Florida, Blend Junior College, and Auburn University. And all those was geographically and 
three different places in America, one being in Florida, one being uh, in Alabama, another one in Texas. So as I was meeting different cultures, meeting different people, meet, meeting different ethnicities, and I was like, oh, I like that. I like how his dad does that. I like how his mom does that. Now, I don't like how that person does that. I wasn't raised like that. So I'm able to be downloaded or attach things that was keen to my eye. I was like, okay, I want to implement that in my life. So I don't hold any grudges or contempt. I appreciate how my dad raised me. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate how my whole household raised me. And I always tell them, I made my parents earn their title, but I got the butter from the duck, you hear me? I made them, you know what I'm saying, beat me. Like back in the day, we didn't have, you know, no outlet to be like, man, my, my, my parents beat me at home. I, I wasn't one of them, the children that could say that because I forced my parents to do this. It's like, boy, you did what? Yeah. Boy, you, this teacher called me one more time, you know, but I never was disrespectful. And that's my biggest fear as a parent. It's like, above all, like my, my children are able to see life in a way when I was six, seven, 16, 15 years old, I didn't have access to as much as they do. So teaching them that's tough. the reality of what life is, it's like, okay, I, I gotta go about it in a different way than my dad did because we didn't, we, mine wasn't in our vocabulary. And I hear my children say that a lot. It's like, no, that's my toy. That's mine, mine. That's and I'm like, voice. hey, uh-uh, hey, stop that. That's my voice. Every day they fight. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It was, we got to figure it out. Yeah. My parents, uh, specifically my dad, he'll take the whole toy. He'll take the whole game system. If y'all don't know how to share, I'm taking it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I go about it still to this day. I see them arguing. I give them like a 30-second grace period. They still arguing, snatching, snatching. Yeah. Take it. Same Don't even worry about it. We, we, ain't, we, ain't, we ain't going like, back and forth. Like I was saying over the other day, I'm like, yo, I love the relationship you have with your parents. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I wish I had that relationship, you know what I mean? Because his yeah. parents was always at every event, yeah. big supporters. And they're like, for me, they're like his big, you know, big brother, big sister. So I don't even look at them as his parents. You know what I mean? I'm like, sometimes I'm like, damn, I wish I had that with my dad. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? But it doesn't mean that my dad, you know, his way of raising me was the wrong way. But that's how, that's what he knew. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All he knew is work hard, provide a roof of our head, food on the table. That's loving. Right. You don't have to say it, you know what I mean? So that was all I was talking to Oprah. I'm like, even though we was raised a different household, right. it's still, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you know what I mean? The foundation still, still is a lot of similarities, same. right? Yeah. Because like, my parents have been together for 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. So I've been seeing like true black love, yeah. the essence of it from mm -hmm. like since birth, you know? For me, the hustle came from looking at the way my parents worked so hard. Mm -hmm. You know, multiple jobs. I'm the firstborn, you know, I have two other siblings and I remember just my parents just working hard to make sure that there was food in the house, clothes. Um, whenever I had like a field trip, they was like, yo, they had that covered. Yep. You know, when uh, when I started college, like they just, I just always seen them working hard to be able to like, I could never question their hustle. Mm. I could never question. So for me to even complain about a job, I'm like, I sh why should I? Mm -hmm. I need to be able to like take things up a notch to be able to provide for mine. Facts. From showing like the examples that they showed provided for my siblings for, and, and myself. Right. Like so that. for that, it's like, I'm just understanding like the, the, the love, you know, mm -hmm. and like the authenticity and not just looking at them as parents, but just look at them, looking at them as just humans. Right. You know, I, I got to an age where I was like, yo, my parents are humans. You know, um, you know, when you was younger, you look at your parents as super, superheroes. Super heroes. Yeah. You know, and for yeah. me, I was like, all right, I need to be able to separate that and just be mindful of like the things that they went through to yeah. be able to adapt and just relate and have like raw conversations with them at the dinner table to be able to be like, all right, let me put myself in that position and to be able to just become a better, a, a bigger gentleman, you yeah. know, a, a, a better black, black man in the society. Right. You know, cause- It's very important because man, my, I was picking my children up yesterday, three separate schools and I picked the oldest up, uh, Jaden, but every one of my children has a nickname. China, I picked China up from school. And you know, he's, he's like in a, he's not used to me picking him up. You know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, I'm outside, boom. Hey, let's go to school. Hey, get up. When I say get up, it's different than mama saying get up. You know, they're, they're being raised in two different households, right? And I'm not one of these people that's going to act holier than thou and say, I got all my shit together because I don't. It's a learning process that each and every day you learn something new each and every day. Now, if it was up to me or, or my parents' um, preference, 
I would have been married. I would have had this, you know, one household where all my children um, are raised in the same household, but they're not. So it's not for me to just be like, oh God, like da, 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 da. it's like, no, it's as a man, you fix it. Yeah. So I'm doing the best that I possibly can. And as we were coming home yesterday, he was like, how is it? You know what I'm saying? Do you want to play football anymore? Hmm. And, and you know, coming from him, I'm like, bro, I see you every day. And you finally just asked that question. And I told him, I was like, listen, you know, my children need me. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You need me. As I'm talking to him, like, you need me. You know what I mean? And before I sit up here and selfishly make something where it, it, I, I say that in respect, not selfishly, but saying it in the term of what's more important to go chase a hundred million dollars and not be the father figure for your children? Because that's too expensive in my eye. My dad came home every single night. I never questioned like, or asked my mom, when is daddy coming home? And I'm blessed enough to be able to say that. My children ra being raised in, uh, under my standards is important for their growth because when they get to a point, when they get 18, 28, 38, God willing, and they say, okay, cool, my dad was this. And before I sit up here and take another opportunity, those are the things that play in the back of my mind. It's like, I'm leaving my family. Yeah. It's a big deal, like a big deal because they, they know of that, but they need my presence around to say, uh-uh, get up. We ain't doing that. Stop whining. Are you, and I said it yesterday, are you crying or are you whining? And I think crying can be, has to be like identified, are you whining to your mom by crying yeah. or is something really hurting you? Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Because like a coach you would, uh, would always say, are you hurt or are you injured? You can play if you're hurt. Right. If you're injured, you can't play. There's, both of them hurt. I mean, both of them ache. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's but, a difference. but it's a big difference. And I think as you raise children, or in that whole development as a human being, are you seeing these examples to say like, man, my mom ain't bitch, my dad didn't bitch, my, my, my household didn't complain about, uh, you know, providing food, they just did it. When I wanted to go to a field trip, they didn't necessarily say, oh boy, you going over there again? They figured it out, you know what I'm saying? And for me, it's for, for me to figure things out and get things done and yeah, on a regular day when I have my children, I do go to four different schools. It's not for me to complain about it. It's for me to just to deal with it. You know what I mean? And, 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 and it's crazy you said that, pick, picking from you left off is, I think one of my biggest flex is putting my kids to sleep every night, yeah. waking up, they see me, bring them to school. You know what I mean? And, and it's crazy because I, when I was growing up, my father was always at work, you know, yeah. trying to provide for three boys. We probably see him early in the morning go to work. We probably right. not see him at night. Right. Come in, there's food on the table the next morning. But I think that's one of my biggest feel like I think God for blessing me with, you know, my you know, the business that I have now that provide me for me to be home for my kids, yeah. pick them up. My wife could be like, hey, I'm going away for a weekend, take care of the kid. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Cause I can I make my own schedule. Yeah. You know, and I and I think that's one of my biggest flex and I love it. I love being a dad. You know, right. that's one of my biggest passions. I see my boys, I'm like, bro, these are my little humans, that's you know what I mean? Me. That's me. That's like me. See. And I think that's my biggest flex, man. It's just being there for them man. from day one. You know what I'm saying? I can't see nobody playing basketball with mine. Facts. I can't play, I can't see nobody playing football or playing catch with mine. Mm. Yeah. Like, I'm I I've identified it where me and both of my baby moms, we are not together. Mm -hmm. I want them to be happy. I will hope that they will want me to be happy too. But when they move on and they find another significant other, that person has to know that their dad You're is, around. I'm around. Facts. Yeah. What, what you got, down. you see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. whatever y'all got going on, that's you. I don't have no more jurisdiction to care who you talk to and how you talk to them. That's not my care. But what I do care about is who's, who's, who's being introduced to my sons? Yeah. Who's being introduced to my daughters? You feel what I'm saying? Like, what, like what's going on? Because I care about that. Because when I had my girlfriend introduce uh, herself to my children, I, I went through the proper things and I told them first as adults, I said, hey, listen, you know, my relationship is getting to that point mm. that I want my significant other 
to meet my children. It's time. We've been dating for multiple years. And I'm like, I'm tired of getting my kids and having to shoo her away. Yeah. And, and it's not fair to her. You feel me? But I was so sacred to my children that it's like, bro, like these are innocent souls that I can't keep playing with that. And it's crazy you say that because, you know, as black men, they always picture us like we can't co-parent, like we are mm -hmm. the problem or it's always drama. And I, was, and I like that, you know, you co-parent with your, you know, your, your exes and things like yeah. that. And I always tell my wife, if this shit don't work out, bro. Just trust me. I'm gonna be in the basement. I'm gonna be. Yeah. I'm gonna be across the street. Yeah. Listen, I, I don't care. The, the kids have to come the first. The kids have to come yeah. first. I don't want the drama. I'm not. You know, drama. Mm -hmm. The kids has to come first. Right. If you hate me, that's fine. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna be there. You're gonna see me. Oftentimes, in in reality, humans make that biggest like issue with. They're using. Children as collateral. I hate that. That's, oh. And uh, only people you're affecting is the is kids. The, is the kids. Yeah, it it is. Is. Yep. You know what I mean? It's not their fault. It's not. Yeah. And it's not for us to just complain and say, oh, well, you did this, or it wouldn't have been this way if you would have. It's like, no, 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 no. You don't get that right to say that. Yeah. Let's deal with what we're doing, dealing with now. We're here. You know what I'm saying? It's no need to, 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 to cry over yesterday. We got to work on today and moving forward. You feel me? But that's needless to say. As we as we said, this topic, I'm curious to know, like, who came up with the name of Garcon Couture? Like, how do we how do we come to to, to that agreement? So the name was, <clears throat> I mean, I created the name. Um, so Garcon, you know, I'm, I'm Haitian. I'm from I'm from Haiti. Mm -hmm. So Garcon in Creole mean guy, Mister, you know, gentleman, you know, like look at this guy, look at this handsome guy, you know, things like. So that's where Gaston came about. A lot of people you see if you say if somebody speaks French, they ask what Gaston means. It could mean totally different to them. Mm -hmm. But in my language, Creole, Haitian Creole, it means guy. And couture, you know, high fashion, you know. So that's where the Gaston couture came about, you know. Right. And then I'm like, hey, and I'm like, and then when the name came about, I'm like, yo, I wanted to, cause I was in the menswear, working in menswear. And I'm like, there's something missing in fashion. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't see a lot of us doing high fashion. You know? Yeah. The only person I see was, you know, and that's not even high fashion. Fubu. Yeah. Um, Sean John. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. I think that was about it. Yeah. But was, even to that point, real fact, in an article uh, that was earlier this year in 2022, less than 5%, 3% as a matter of fact, that's hard to believe. In the bro. industry, yeah. are minorities that identify as black. And it's a, it's a big industry, that's too. Oh, wow. Listen, yeah. No, that's in a hundred percent of the fashion, the under as a hundred percent of the fashion industry, only three percent of the people identify as black. Now, you may say Asians, you may say Hispanic descent, you may say the Indian, Punjabi, whatever, you know, descent. There's many different colors, creeds, and ethnicities, and I respect them all. But when I'm speaking specifically to the black people, only 3%. Now, we also have to identify that Garcon Couture is not streetwear. Definitely not. Nope. Nope. So the competitor is Ralph Lauren. Yes. Brunello Cuccinelli. Brooks Brothers. Brooks Brothers yeah. Tom uh, Ford. Tom Ford. You know what I'm saying? And there's nobody. And this is really what was so important for me to say. It's like there's nobody that's that's penetrating this lane that looks like us. You know what I'm saying? You we hear the songs, you know, Jay-Z, I don't pop, Molly, I rock Tom Ford. You know what I'm saying? And nobody or a person may also have it on the flip side and say, oh, there's our, there are minority black people who are in the fashion industry. You know, the off-white, rest in peace to Virgil. Uh, you have Fear of God. You have so many different other ones that, I, that, I, that, I, that I'm, you know, drawing a blank right now. You have uh, athletes that's involved with fashion as well. You got uh, Inner City with uh, uh, Russell Westbrook. And those are streetwear, luxury streetwear. But... When I'm seeing you guys right here in your Chelsea boots and your loafers and, you know, this is what I identify with. You know what I'm saying? Everybody always asks me, it's like, bro, where did you get your, your fashion eye from? And I grew up in church. So I identify with more of this fashion rather than the jeans and the baggy shirts and the, the Jordans. And the, my, my parents never bought Jordans. That's not, that's not to say that I didn't want them. 
I just went so long without having it. It was like, bro, you, you know, I feel comfortable with having Same here. these type of shoes on. You feel me? Now, with that even being said, it's like how with hearing that statistic, yeah. how are you able to say what makes Garcon Couture different than the other brands that's out there? I think for us, it's a day-to-day -day, uh, thing for us where we pride ourselves in structure, right? In creativity and diversity. Yes. Yo, we go and we really research like fabrics. We look at what competitors are doing and we do the opposite. We like really go to the drawing board and do things from scratch mm -hmm. without comparing ourselves to others, yeah. right? I, we create for the consumer to put them in a position to be like, yo, this is fire, but they didn't know that would be fire until we put it in front of them. You know, we like drawing from like a blank canvas yeah, yeah. and we're, we're like throwing our, our skills on it. And I'm like, yo, this is what you should wear. Yeah. And then they come back to us like, yo, that was phenomenal. Yeah. Give me 10 more of those. Mm. Yeah. And also just to pick up, just, you know, like we have an eye for textures. Like we mix a lot of textures and pattern yeah. I and mean, we're not scared of colors. And that's one thing. Yeah. And you know, and me and him, yeah, we business partners. And what's good about this is we have totally different tastes. Yeah. But it worked. It's crazy, but it worked. Right. You know, totally different style, different taste, as you can see us, you know. But it's like we have that eye, like, yo, this is what's gonna be hot. Right. This is, and we don't try to follow the trend because I don't think that's fashion yeah. for me. Yeah, fashion. You know, I think you, should, you create it from a blank canvas. Right. You know, I think that's what makes Gaso Couture where we are right now, just to be, what, six years in, still yeah. pushing after COVID, you know. Right. And we, we hell of expressive. Like, right. we're, not, we're not mute. Like, we like to be able to show out yeah. without even saying nothing. We we'll step into a room and they know who we are. Yeah, correct. You know, before we even say a word, because we're expressive. You know, not only with the clothes, but just the way we carry ourselves. Man, listen, that's 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 my heartbeat. Self-expression without even having to open your mouth. Yeah, there you go. And I seen Gilly on social media. And I was like, man, who the fuck is this dude? <laughs> Fucking the gram up with the sauce. I'm like, oh, sauce overload. Ah, I can't deal. Swipe. Oh, another one. Oh, it's some more heat. Oh, wet floor sign. Drip is a mess. You know what I mean? I was like, bro. I reached out to him. I was like, bro. I almost wanted to say, who the fuck are you? Yeah. Who the fuck do you think you are? You know what I'm saying? Like, me. You know what I'm saying? Who you think you is, motherfucker? Me? I'm the only motherfucker that can be this fresh. But, you know, reaching out to him on social media, how has social media been a, a positive role or the negative in this fashion industry? Because... You know, with when I do my research and I read books about fashion, the Versace's of the world, um, other different, you know, uh, companies, and whether looking at documentaries, like I said, reading books, they all have a story, you know what I'm saying? And it led from something, you know what I mean? You said six years in, where was the background? Did we, did we come from fashion? Did we go to school for, you know? I mean, for me, I didn't go to school for fashion. I went to school, tell you the truth, if, if I had my way, I would have been a professional soccer player. Mm. I was a soccer player. I played soccer from six years old until college, until I got hurt, you know? But, you know, like I said, growing up in a Haitian household, my father's very straight. It's education first. We were about everything else sec second. So after college, you know, I live in, I live in New York. Mm -hmm. So I'm riding the train and I see these guys on the train suit up, looking fly. But I don't see none of the guys that look like me. Mm. It's a lot of... You know, yeah, Wall head, Street, right? Wall Street, Caucasian suitcase, guys. clean tie. I'm like, damn, bro. I wish one day I could have a job I could wear suit every day. Mm. And that's just me talking. And fast forward, I move upstate, mm -hmm. work in retail, and then I got retail with what? What, what, what uh, company? I want to put that. They cut checks for us. They not cut <laughs> checks. <laughs> They're not cutting the check. So I mean, in menswear. 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 Okay. Yeah. Cool. Boom. Menswear. Suits, that's when I fell in love with suits. I'm like, damn, bro, I love, I love how when I have a suit on, how people look at me different. Mm -hmm. You know, I always tell this story. Um, I, went, I went to my friend's house, okay? I had jeans on and t shirt, and then I'm about to, and the lady about to leave, she closed the door behind her so I don't come in. You know? Same, same house, I had a suit on and everything. She, hold, she held the door open. What? And then have a good, have a good day. I'm like, bro. Check this out. Yeah. So my pop is probably the wisest person that I know, right? He says this, the way you dress oh. is the way you are addressed. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So for me, it's like, bro, every day, everybody who knows me know, like this is, it may not be to this degree, 
but I put it on every day. Every day. Every day. It's just, I mean, I could be going to damn uh, the convenience store or the grocery store. I'm going to dress in a way that people know, like, my, my presence is felt. It's like, oh shit, I'm gonna look good, I'm gonna smell good, I'm gonna make sure like all the things are, you know, in place because it's not to say that I'm better than you. It's just to say, what does it say about the person who pays attention to the details? details. All about the details. You're right. You see what I'm saying? When I was in when I was in 10th grade, um, we my my 10th grade English teacher, she would be like dressed for success on Wednesdays. Mm. And I just felt different on Wednesdays. Like I would come and dressed up. And speaking, like speaking out loud, presenting, it just gave me a different type of aura. And yeah. it was like, damn, this is, this is who you really are. Yeah. And that's when that for me it was like, yo, it started to open the door for me where it's like, yo, what if I dress like this more often? Like what type of results will show up for me? You know what I mean? So, so I was like, yo, I need to dress like this more and let's see what happens. And then people started to compliment me. People were asking like, yo, Illy, like, yo, what should, you, what should I wear to this? Yo, Illy, I see, I see what you're doing there. People in the hood, I'm from the South Bronx in New York, <laughs> raising the South Bronx, Fact. like doing a crack epi epi epidemic. And then the results of that, that's my generation now. Yeah. You know, so I need to make sure that I provide some type of example for, for people who, who's in my neighborhood. You know, the, like the young black men that are growing up and they're like, yo, like, I don't have no route to go or like give me some type of pathway. Right. And I'm here giving them an, an example right. of where to start. Give me and, hope. And then also just like, I'm from Brooklyn, Flatbush Church Avenue. The only two reasons you go to you are suit is to go to court mm -hmm. or funeral. Mm. So nobody was wearing suit to just, you know what I mean? Nobody go, yeah. go to church and stuff like that. So when this, and I wanted to give that image, like you could wear suits for other occasions. Yeah. You don't have to be going to court or going to funeral. Like you situation, like you know what I'm saying? Every day. So that was the big, like stoning like this business, just to see people like us. And I'm like, the only person I think that could bring us to the next level is my best, my best friend right now, Ilber, because he was, he had a background in graphic design. Mm. You know, he had a business before, you know? So I'm like, let me reach out to Ilber. Let me see what's up. You know, we talk about my, yo, this is the vision. And then from there, it just took, took off. Flat, took off. Took what's off. the clientele look like? Oh man. Like us. Yes. <laughs> and like, a lot, you know, what's funny is a lot of yeah. people ask us to change. Yeah. Cause you know, we, we, a lot of clientele is us. Yeah, African, 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 or from the African diaspora. African diaspora. Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot African of diaspora. Yes. Yeah, from everywhere. everywhere. I'm talking about people walking in there from Ethiopia, Ethiopia from Nigeria. Nigeria. You know what I mean? Haiti. Like from jo oh, Joe Bird, Honduras. Jamaica, Trinidad, Honduras, Dominican Republic. They're walking into our showrooms and we're giving them something that they've never experienced. Yes. Mm. So imagine walking into a, a, a barbershop, yeah. but now you're, you're talking clothes, mm. right? Uh, you're drinking some, some wine yeah. and we're giving them the best experience that they can't just walk into a regular, uh, one of our competitors, what they're doing, yeah. they can't provide that how we can. And then we're talking to them, not down to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're like, listen, this is where we look good. You know, we're talking to them, like we having you be a part of this process. We're not just gonna be like, you put this on, that's it. This, yeah. give me your money, swipe it now. Nah, we give you the whole lesson. Yeah. This is why I'm gonna put you in this because your body structure, this is why I think we look good with you because it's your wedding and yeah. things like that, you know? So the next thing that I will, that has to be mentioned is two black men making money together. How the fuck does that work? For me, because, I mean, me, us, I think money, it was not the priority. Yeah. No, because, I, because, no, hold on, let, nah, me, nah, let, me, let me, let me, let me, let me make it right, though, to the consumer, because when you, when people see this, they always say, there's, there's, the example that was told to me, when a white man says to another white man, fuck you, right? Mm. And a black man says to another black man, fuck you. Those are two different fuck yous, right? The white man saying fuck you to another white man, they can still make millions together, hmm. but they don't have to fool with you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Now, hey, so-and-so, I don't want you to hang out with you know, them, da 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 but we're still business partners. We still can go along to get along, you right? Black man says another fuck you to another black man, it's fuck them. Yeah. Like, cut off your arm. Like, Get rid of them. You're dead to me. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to see you. I don't want to even be around you. You know what I'm saying? Because there's so many different people that have that mentality where we're from in our culture. I agree. And it's like, how are we able to co-mingle in a, in a state where it's like, okay, cool. You know, I just got this, um, I just got this contract or I just got this from, 
you know, a person who reached out to me, this is mine. Yeah. Going back to mine, mine, mine. This is what what was the first thing I said when he reached out? I'm like, bro, I sent him the message, I sent him the screen. I'm like, bro, yeah. you think this is camp? Or this is a scam? Yeah. <laughs> and I just said, he's like, hold on, let me check. He's like, nah, nigga, that's Kim. He's like, check the way he write. I'm like, nah, that's Kim, that's Kim. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it worked with me and with Elvis just yeah. because the respect. And yeah. we go back to the, our upbringing, yeah. our parents, the respect, you know, the hard work, the dedication. And I think we didn't get in this game about money mm -hmm. because it's not like me and him have a million dollars in the bank chilling, you know what I mean? True. Chilling in the Bronx here in Brooklyn. Yeah. No, I think we love what we do and we have respect for each other. And it shows. And, and then, we have the uncomfortable conversation yeah, yeah. that people are scared to have. They rather beef, like, fuck, fuck this nigga, I'm out of here, you know, then have that conversation. Yeah. Me and, me and Uber, sometimes we've been, we have a lot of stuff we fight about. Yeah, we definitely you know, do. But like brothers. We, 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 <laughs> I respect him. I would never, you know what I mean? If I have yeah. something I got to tell him, like, Yo, bro, I'm, I don't yeah. like what you, how you move. I don't like the way you did this. How should we do it next time so it don't happen again? You know, I think that's where for me. I, I think for um, when you said like, yo, what's Garth's couture? And the first thing you said was brotherhood. Mm. So we stem from like the essence of like pure brotherhood to be able to like sit down at the, at the table. We were college roommates. Like for lunch, we had ramen noodle. Like we Facts. know where we start from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then for us, it's like, yo, there's no way back. Like I come from poverty, yeah. Yeah. you know, from villages in Honduras. Like there's no way like I'm going to be able to take steps back for us to be able to actually speak and have these uncomfortable positions to be able to. Uh, actually communicate, have raw communication, and be able to take it one step at a time. Right. Like how you mentioned, Cam, like, yo, we here already. Don't worry about the, the, the past. Let's figure out what, where we are now and, and how can we move forward. forward. Because yeah. having a company and like, it's millions of sacrifices. Yeah. He was like, yo, like, yo, we're going to be on, like, yo, Illy, I need you to like be 100%. I was like, all right, let's be 100%. And I quit my job. Quit my job. Mm. Yeah. Quit, not, quit, quit my job. And I was like, yo, let me, he was in Miami. I was in New York. And I was like, yo, I'm like, yo, I had a premonition. I think that we had to, because I'm big on dreams and like signs. I'm really big on that. And I had a dream. I'm like, yo, I see like a wooden door and it says Garcia Couture, excellence in every threat. He was like, all right, yo, what's the budget for it? Yo, we got to find an office. And, and we, I was like, yo, we got to find an office in New York City because people are not going to come to the Bronx to my apartment to get measured. Yeah. yeah. They're not. And I was like, yo, we got to get an office in the city and we got to get the money for it. We don't we have no investors, none of that stuff. Mm. We was like, yo, let's, let's ask family members, family members. Let's see what's up to pay the, the first month rent, last month rent. And then yo, we got an office in the middle of New York City, Grand Central New York. Mm. And I'm like, yo, bro, we, we live. Let's do it. Let's go. And I'm like, I'm talking about like, so because Gilly was showing me a lot of like the, all of like the years that he learned in menswear. I had to learn from that. And it was like a learning curve for me because I was, I'm in graphic design and marketing. I was doing logos, websites, branding, right? So because I wasn't in, in the closure. I, I knew streetwear, but I didn't know fine menswear. Yeah. That's a big difference. Big. I'm talking about fit, structure, yeah. depending on body types. Yep. Bespoke and custom yep. suits. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm FaceTiming Gilly. I'm calling him like, yo, I, how do you do this? How am I pinning up? And we have an office in, in, in Manhattan, in the middle of Manhattan. My frat brothers are calling him like, yo, how can I get a suit? Supporting me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was like one of those things where it was like, yo, how you can- You a frat? You a yeah. Greek? Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Cap Papa Psy. What? Yo. You too? No, 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 no frat, no frat. No, I'm the brother. I'm the brother. Yeah, no, 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 I'm a cousin. I'm a cousin. I know him. You try, no, 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 Yo, yep. that first year, that first year and a half, it was sacrifices. Like, yeah. no brunches, no birthdays. Like, I was really like, we was trying to figure because we still had school loans. Yeah. No, we were just really trying to figure it out. I'm like, yo, I just one client. At the first three months, it was like maybe one client a month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, the sixth month, we started getting like two, three clients a month, mm -hmm. four clients a month. I'm like, oh, okay. And then don't forget, we was in accessories. Yeah, yeah. We wasn't even into. When you yeah. first launched, it was just like, Ties, pocket ties, square, pocket. lapel pins. So we wasn't into the suit game yet, you know? And I'm like, Ober, what do you think about, yo, getting, because I'm like, Ober, I know, I know the suit game. We should get in the suit game. It was like, I don't know. You know, like I said, he wasn't comfortable with it. I was. So I'm like, bro, this is where we need to be. Accessories sell, but yeah. they don't sell like suit yeah. does. The, the numbers know. look different. The numbers, numbers are different. different. Some accessories to yeah. suit. Yeah. yeah. You know what fashion designer started off in accessories, selling accessories? You say, which fashion? What fashion designer? Ralph Lauren? Ralph Lauren. Yeah. He from, you know he's from the Bronx, right? Yeah. Didn't know that. Well, uh, yeah. uh, 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 yeah, yeah. His, it's not Ralph Lauren, it's like Ralph LaShitz. Yeah. Ralph LaShitz. And then he switched it because yeah. they, they, said they, they kept making fun of his last name. Mm -hmm. So he, he switched it to the Boom. Yeah. Mm. So seeing that, when I looked at 
and was doing my research on Ralph Lauren. That's one of my favorite uh, fashion brands. Yeah. Well, fuck fashion. That's one of my favorite yeah. brands. That stories, yeah. And the way he's able to um, advertise the dream mm -hmm. of clean, comfortable, comfortable in your own skin. Um, I always went about it. And Atlanta's culture, fashion culture, kind of hit that white boy, black boy swag. When I was like in high school, yeah. you know, you gotta wear a polo. polo. With the big, with the you, big you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then wear jeans and then you just wear some clean white shoes. You feel me? Like that was the trend, you feel me? And where I am now, it's just like, how do I show that and monetize it to a degree? Because I've made so many other people money hmm. by going to um, the Met Gala. The Met Gala yeah. You know what I'm saying? Going through different places. It's like, what the fuck does Cam got on? Oh, he's wearing Versace. Oh, he's wearing Ralph Lauren. Oh, he's wearing Tom Ford. Oh, he's doing this. And I'm like, well, none of these people come from where I come from. They don't really care mm -hmm. if I buy it or not because somebody's going to do it. That's success. And that's not to say that their company is shit. I admire them. Yeah. I really do. But at the same time, they give me the kind of milestone to be able to achieve that and attain. My question is like, where, when was there a moment where he was like, ah, oh, this shit making sense now? Oh, man. Which part? Uh, for me, I think when we start, um, we see a little money in the account, and then we start dressing alias celebrities like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caleb, our first big um, celebrity was Caleb McLaughlin. Yes. Mm. Um, from, you know, the kid from Stranger Things. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. It was like, that was a, a huge, I, I'm not going back to, to um, my Thanks. nine to five yeah, at all. He was like, he got best dress. Um, he wore it for the Emmys and the Globe, the Globe and Globe Awards. And who he was standing next to. Yeah, he like was standing that. next to his castmates and he got best dress. And they was and, wearing. Yeah, they was wearing like Versace, Gucci, Versace. Gucci on. and then they was like, what are you wearing? He was like, Gossip Couture. Phone blew up. I'm like, yo, Gilly, we out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Facts. Hey, new number, who didn't see that? Right. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's where it was like, yo, this, mm -hmm. we got something here. Then we got, then we got Joel and B. Rotimi, Amori Hardwick, Daniel Brooks, like the, the list just kept growing. Mm -hmm. It just kept growing and it got to a point where it was beautiful because all of our, all of our, our customers, all of our consumers look just like us. Mm. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, this is the power of the black dollar. Yeah. Yeah. And this is proof of it. And we're here to give them uh, a system where they can just walk in, save space, yeah. And provide for them something that they want, and we give we have something that they, that they need. We yeah. want we as a culture yes. want yes. this. Yes. This is needed. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Just to be able to say, oh shit, what you wearing? Oh, it don't matter what I got on. Minorities made this. People who look like me made this, and they're able to empathize with what I went through, what I'm going through, and what I will go through. To to now, economically, may be different. Kevin Hart may not have to go through what Demetrius Hart goes through. But at the same time, he still, he knows what it's like to be Demetrius. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cam Newton, you know, whether he has this much money in the account, that much money in the account, he knows what Sam Newton goes through yeah. as a minority. You feel me? And like where we at right now, what's next for Garcon Couture? Man, that's... You tell us, Cam. Yeah. You, you part of the team now. You got to let them know. What's up? <laughs> tell us what's going <laughs> on. I'm like, to the end. You know, Look, but, let's talk about it. Let's I mean, talk. I feel like, you know what I mean? It's, there's no, it's, everything is just, it's open door right now for us. We could go as far as, you know, this is, this is for next generation, generation, generation. We, sure, we, we wanted, we wanted to, we want to be intentional because yeah. right now we're at, we're at the new regime. Uh, we just finished doing Fashion Week and the new regime is pretty much, uh, the new reality yeah. for Garcia Couture, yes. right? Uh, we've got new, we got new showrooms, and we have new looks, new collections, and we want to be able to provide something for our people that that's gonna have them step outside the box yeah. or not. Yeah. Like, yo, if you want to be, you, so you know, we have the conservative people, yeah. you know, and we could provide something and for them stuff as well. for them, yeah. and it still pops. Like yeah. people wear black tuxes, Garcia Couture, and they know it's ours, and it's a black clean tux. Yeah. From like the structure, from the fabric, Cut. from the look. We getting the same stuff that the people that is being looked at that makes the same quality the same stuff. stuff. Exactly. Same or better. Yeah. I know a lot of our stuff from these big yeah. competitors, our stuff is way it's better. Way better. You know what I'm saying? It's better. just the name. The name. And yeah. my, my question for you, Kim, we'll go back. Do you think 
like you in the you in the industry. Yeah. When you have designer on, you think that's style? Having wearing, like a guy like designer from top to bottom. You think you call that style? No, American I don't. Look. <laughs> I think, American look. There you I go. Think, I you think, think that's style? The thing that I've always said, and everybody always asks me, who's my stylist? I think having a stylist mm. is like a rapper having a ghostwriter. Mm. <laughs> Shit. No, no, hey, no, no, no disrespect to the stylist. No, shout out to, no, shout out to, no, shout out to no, the listen, stylist. Listen, yeah. stylist. Yeah. No, listen, yeah. and I will it's make it stylist. right. Listen, and to my stylist that's out there. We know a lot of stylists out there. Shout we out to have them. to identify the great ones. They bring out what their client likes. Yeah. And they show that. But when a person is just financially able to just get the mannequin and wear the mannequin, that's not style. Yeah. That's just access. You have access to do that. Yeah. Now, I'm not trying to shit on no styluses. I'm not trying to shit on any you know, personal shoppers. All I'm trying to say is this. Coming from a person who really takes pride in wearing what I wear, I just look at it through a different lens because I know the process that it takes. Like My children, my, my girl, like they see me the night before picking out all my clothes. You know what I'm saying? If I need to iron it, I will iron it. Not I saw you iron back there. You was ironing your, your like, pocket square, bro. Come on, bro. Like, it's, it's there. Like, I'm like, I'm bro, you there. get that spot your pocket square, I'm bro? I'm there. I'm there. I thought, I thought, there. It, was gonna be a, I thought it was gonna be like a, no. a stylist coming. Let me get that for you, Kim. Uh -uh. No, Kim out here just no. iron the pocket square, no. bro, with the starch. No. Start no. Everything. <laughs> but even then, like, let's talk about let's talk about our partnership and how do we get to this to this point? Because we know where we have to go. Um, we've identified the next steps for Garcon Couture. I'm a member of Garcon Couture for you motherfuckers who didn't know. Cheers to that. If you don't know, now you know, killer. You feel me? And I want to say I have no intent to change what's already been created. Mm -hmm. I just want to be an ally to be able to fast track what's already been done and meet the vision and, and let's say, let's go. Okay, hey Cam, I need help with getting this. Okay, boom, that's my job to do that. Hey, I got an idea, man, I seen X, Y, Z. We all travel a lot. We get a lot of inspiration for what you see. You just came from Greece, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And it's like all these different things. I'm a big screenshot taker and a picture taker like when I'm in different places and it only speaks to me. It's like, that's why I love art. That's why I love fashion. That's why I love really uh, freedom of speech, whether it's in music, poetry, art, art in any form. You feel me? And you've identified it as the next step for Garçon Couture is to create a ready to wear line that we're in, in, in the process of creating. And how do we get to that to be successful. Not successful to what somebody else deems successful. Successful is what we deem successful. I mean, with us, first I wanna say, it's crazy how this moment is happening, because like I was telling you, 20, 2019, 2018, I, I was you for Halloween. How did, yes, I, I, I had that, I had that, so like, let's- I, I was you yeah, for Halloween. You're talking about manis manifestations. That's crazy, and it's crazy. People yeah. always try, oh, people always like, every time I just like, yo, you just like Kim. You know what I mean? Damn, you do the hat and stuff like that. And it's crazy how we here sitting down talking to you. Like, I was you for Halloween. Look, manifestation. You used, people used to identify you dressing like Cam. Nah. Nah. Not Cam, my <laughs> business partner. Yeah, yeah, my business partner. <laughs> but it's crazy. Oh. So it's like, I'm still like taking it, taking it all in mm -hmm. as we speak. But I think you coming on board means everything. I think that's the piece we needed. Yeah. You know, because again, like I was telling you, your style, you was known as the guy with the style in the NFL. Your style is different. Right. You style yourself, mm -hmm. and it's just you, it's just you, how you are transparent and things like that. So, first time I met you, first thing that came out of your mouth is being transparent. Yes. And you've been like, you've been that from day one. I feel like you coming into Gasson, it's, mm -hmm. it's just it's the perfect puzzle. Like for me too, and this is for anybody, any influencer or any person in power that has ability. This was not the first opportunity um, to, for me to get into fashion. This was really 
officially, because I had a line at a department store. Yeah. That will you told remain, me that. Yeah, we're not with Mary Sign. Yeah. We're, we're we don't remain say the anonymous. Name. <laughs> People, if you know, you know. Yeah. But this was not the first opportunity, but this is the first opportunity that feels right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yeah. I'm looking at individuals that can take my idea and insert the heartbeat, insert the arteries, and bring it to life. And I've always been wanting that. So for anybody who's out there who has a lot of access to different things, just wait. Because one thing about partnership and the God that I serve, it's going to be seamless. It's not going to feel like, bro, man, we got to do this again. And like I operate off full transparency. I don't like, I don't like secrets. Hell, my woman know, like, I can't tell a lie if it, if it, you know, if you put a gun to my head. I just, I just got to keep it above. My dad's that same way. It's like, bro, it's going to come out high. It's going to come out, you know, it's, it, it, it come from love, though. Your breath stink. Now what? Get over it. Go get some contact. I mean, go get some dog on Tic Tacs. Yeah. Put it in your mouth, da, 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 da. But for me, it's like I see a brand and I want to provide value to it more than just what money can give it's really aligning with the vision and being a part of something that could be greater than you. I think that's why I'm here, you know and, what I mean? And also is how real you are because we just had our fashion show in New York City Fashion Week. Yeah. And they were like, Kim, we want you to be there. You didn't see, now you just pull up. Sure. And it's like, it's how, like, you know, you know, a lot of guys in your position, they work with a whole entourage, they got the stylist. Yo, first day I met you, it was just you yeah. at your restaurant. What's the restaurant over there? Uh, Smoky Style. Smoky Style. Came at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. He actually was in the back in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. And then he came running. We sat down. I'm like, damn, I'm like, I'm looking, I'm like, what's the entourage? Yeah. Where's the lawyer? Yeah, Where's the bro. stylist? Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's, For me it's personally, true. me personally, that's always was looked at as weakness. Mm. Like yeah. people with a lot of people, like there, there's a a lot of cliche sayings as that strength in numbers. But at the same time, I believe in my peace. And when I'm when I'm going, anybody I always know. I always say, if I'm not with my woman or I'm not with my children, I'm by myself. I feel comfortable with it by myself. I love like I'll go home and later today when I go home to pick my kids up, I will be in silence. I have to hear myself think. I'm big on manifestation. I'm big at at, at really tapping into your core essence. And the my religion being in Christianity, every time God or Jesus will hear from God. He alienated himself. Yeah. You know, going to the desert, 40 days, 40 nights, fasting. Those are things that I still implement in my life. You know, so with this partnership, I prayed about it. With, I prayed for an opportunity and also prayed to say, like, listen, I want them to see my heart. Because it's oftentimes that a lot of guys like yourselves get dicked. Facts. Yeah. Get yeah. fucked. So we'll Facts. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I, oh, I know that. And only time will tell. You see what I'm saying? That I want to be able to say, bro, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, when you guys, you know, whether you have children or not, with your children that you have now, you can be able to say, man, listen, man, bringing Cam on board, that was a game changer for us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I want to be able to, as other companies that I'm involved with that that's all I want from it. You know what I mean? I don't want, I don't operate off of having a hidden motive. You know what I mean? I'm pure and I want when people see me, they just see me. I don't want, you know, I don't want to have to take into account of that, oh, that's my homeboy Rallo. That's my homeboy uh Raleem. That's my homeboy Zach. That's Jacob. And oh, that's Josh over there. That's my partner too. Because I look at it as I grew in stardom, I start realizing that all those people are not friends, but they're bills. Mm. Because I'm not going to change my lifestyle just to appease to you. Because if we say, all right, bro, let's go to lunch, I'm going to a place that I want to eat at. And now that place, that place may be Fellowship, that place may be Roof Chris, that place may be Morton's, that place may be Mastro's, that place may be a steakhouse, any one of them. And I know how much fine dining costs, I'm not going to uh, bypass that just to appease to your per diem of Chick-fil-A, your per diem of McDonald's, your per diem of Hardee's, your per diem of Crystal's. I'm like, no, bro, I'm going here and that's what it is. And a lot of people get sidetracked because I'm used to spending an X amount of dollar on myself. And now people that don't have those means to do so, now their bills 
that you got to pay for it. Like, bro, I ain't got money for this steak or this lobster, so I got to pay for it. So it's that's what I've yeah, recognized. Yeah. Especially after watching that broke doc, the broke documentary mm. <laughs> on ESPN bro. 30 for 30. One of those things where it's, it's like, that's a real thing. That. Yeah, it is. That's yeah. a real thing. So how do, how do we get, like, what's the, the next steps, you know what I'm saying, for us as a company uh, to tell the consumer, to the, the viewer who's watching this, what to expect moving forward? Yeah, man. I think for us it's uh, talking strategy, right? I'm big on infrastructure. I'm big on being able to execute. But not only execute, but execute at a high level, yeah. right? So once we come up with a system where, all right, this is what we're going to create, and this is what's going to look like, the ready-to-wear line, um, making sure like these, uh, these things that we create are actually, and they stay with like pure excellence. Mm -hmm. You know, understanding that, because uh, we already know what our consumer wants. A lot of it is going to come from our creative minds and our, our team. You know, so that that power in itself is going to be colossal because I know what we're going to what we're about to do hasn't been done yet mm. at the level that we're about to do it Correct. for the people who don't even know that they're that they're, they're not ready for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You you only know what you know. And yeah. it's like, yeah, you're going to see when you get it, you're going to be like, I didn't know I, I needed this, mm. but I need a bunch of that. Mm. A bunch of that. Add to cart. <laughs> a bunch of that. <laughs> not facts. You said it. You said it. I think that's um, um, it's it's going to be like a. A collaboration that people have never seen before. You know, yeah. I think without us three, different style. Yeah. You know, and and that's what's good about this company is we have different mindset, different mm -hmm. style. It's not one thing go. You know what I mean? With something I might like, you might not like, right. or Elbert might not like. Right. But at the end of the day, we're gonna try to make that work for the company. Right. You know. So yeah. And I want people to know that uh, we're, we're we're speaking globally. We're not only speaking domestically. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because we travel the globe, and it's like. We want people in South Africa to know who we are and to be able to have have a reach to us. Yeah, we ain't are. no local steppers now. Yeah. We big steppers. Yeah, you big hear me? Steppers. Like, I want you to have yeah. the same experience, that one-on-one -on -one experience. Yeah. Always. No matter how big we get, no matter how many showrooms we open up, we want it to stay consistent with the, the culture and the experience of Garçon Couture. So right place? now, Garçon Couture has three locations. Yes. Where are they? We're in New York, we're in Miami, and we're in Atlanta. Yeah. ATL, ho. Yes, sir, <laughs> ski. And yeah, so if somebody sees this or when they see this, yeah. how will they be able to support? Like First and foremost, make sure you follow us on IG, Facebook, Garcon Couture. That's G-A-R-C-O-N, Couture, C-O-U-T-U-R-E, Garcon Couture. Follow us if you want to make an appointment. You're going to go to GarcinCouture.com on the website, um, backslash appointment. You can make appointments for your wedding. Wedding. We've done over 400 weddings. Mm. In comedy. Globally. Yeah. I just finished coming from San Serena, Greece. Shout out to uh, sort of Lorenzo and Erica, uh, get out to Gordon. Uh, we've done weddings in uh, Nigeria and in, uh, in, in like Trinidad and, and all over. And, and we're, I'm about to go to Mexico and Jamaica for weddings. What? You know what I mean? So, but it's like people from the African diaspora. Yeah. And I'm talking about we're doing groomsmen. groomsmen. Yeah. You know, we're doing groomsmen. Grooms, 10, women. 20 plus. We're groomsmen. doing groomswomen. Yes. You know what I mean? We have like the double breasted dress, you know, the, the blue what? dress. Like, What's the, um, the lady you, um, from. Um, Daniel Brooks. Daniel I just Brooks. I, we did Daniel Brooks wedding in uh in in January and that was in Miami. Yep. You know what I mean. Yeah. We just did uh, Deezus. He had like a, a orange double breast. He was at the fashion show. So just I want you guys to just look out, follow uh, uh my on, I'm on IG IJ Sanchez. Mm -hmm. I'm on <laughs> IG too. Follow me, Mr. Gilly eighty seven. Um, I want to ask you a question again. You went you went to our fashion show. From what did you what you thought about the fashion show now, in your perspective? I think this is a brand that's fastly and and it, it looks different it feels different and it is different and when i stepped in i i seen it was it was an all-in-one kind of fashion show yes. that i saw and it was like looking at the the fashion brands prior to garcon couture's segment it was like oh this oh we got something mm -hmm. And then when you guys presented it, it was like, oh shit, it is different. You know what I mean? Just the 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 aesthetic was was just there. You know, you know what I mean? And I was like, bro, baby steps. You know, you can't. The joy is in the journey, not the destination. You see what I'm saying? So once once we are able to always align visually or mentally, not visually. And to say, this is how I feel, and we brainstorm different ideas, it's just going to be on us to, to really execute. 
I'm excited for that. Yeah, I, I think because we're all different indivi- individuals with different ideas, mm-hmm. I feel like going to the drawing, coming to the to the, to the table, it'll be like a, an erupting volcano yeah. of like just pure creativity and just like nuances that have never been done before. Come on, bro. You see me. Look at me. Look <laughs> you at might me. be like, we don't know what to drop <laughs> next. <laughs> we don't know what to drop. Like, Look at what me. to drop. Look nah, at me. Just, Look yeah. at me. We got, we got yeah. stuff coming. Look That's at me. Coming. You think I came here to play with you? <laughs> I did. <laughs> if you wanted me to tell you. Yo, Ken, right. what, are you, what are you the most excited about? Now that you're part of the, you're part of the team, what are you I, the most excited about? Creating. Creating. Mm. Seeing so I've never I've been a part of different brands, um, but I've never been able to be a part of the creative process from top to bottom. Mm. Okay. So seeing something as simple as, okay, I want the buttons to be here. Is it a functional button? If it is it not, you know, do you have multiple lapel pin sockets? Uh, do you have different, you know, pocket squares? You know, is it double breasted? Is it single breasted? Is it this? Is it that? And opening up a whole different you know, my side of your mind to say, damn, I never looked at it like that. Oh, that's what it, you know what I mean? The, so, be- the beauty of this is, is that, you know, when people say think outside the box, we don't have a box in Gossip Control. We don't have, <laughs> we don't have, don't have a box. <laughs> yeah. So I love that you're saying a- that because it's like, you can go off. All right. right. We don't have a box. So right. boom, as we end things at Funky Friday, man, fellas, man, appreciate your energy, man. And let's fucking create. Let's go. Thank you for having us, bro. Shout out to my boys, my wife. The team, Liddell, Rebecca. Liddell, Rebecca. Yeah. The lawyers, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so as we end things, we're going to look at this one. Then we're going to go here. And then we're going to finish at that camera. All right. You ready? And one finger. One pinky. One thumb. One love. Your dick. Let's go. Funky Friday. We out of here. <laughs>